as you can guess if we have a notation called the big o notation to capture the fact that the given function t of n is bounded from above by some constant multiple of f of n there must be a corresponding notation to capture the to capture the fact that t of n might be bounded from below by some constant multiple of f of n so that is basically the big omega notation so it's sort of the mirror image of the big o notation when we say that t of n is big omega of f of n we mean that there exists a constant greater than 0 such that t of n is bounded from below by a constant multiple of f of n of course for n larger than some threshold so in other words c times f of n needs to be less than or equal to t of n so this is specifying a lower bound the big o notation was specifying an upper bound and the big theta notation was specifying both a lower bound and an upper bound so you can guess that if a function p of n is given to be is given to be theta of f of n it must also be big omega of f of n because if it satisfies the definition of theta of f of n there must exist two constants c1 and c2 both positive such that t of n is bounded from below by c1 times f of n and bounded from above by c2 times f of n this obviously implies that t of n is bounded from below by c1 times f of n by itself so if we just ignore the constraint for the upper bound we pretty much we we pretty much see that t of t of n is big omega of f of n as well wherever it's theta of f of n it's going to be big omega of f of n as well but the converse is not true that is if we are given that t of n is big omega of f of n it does not necessarily imply that t of n is also big theta of f of n for t of n to be big theta of f of n it needs to be not only bounded from below by a constant multiple of f of n but it also needs to be bounded from above by a constant multiple of f of n so for t of n to be big theta of f of n it needs to be both big omega of f of n and big o of f of n so if i if you had to state the converse it could be t of n is equal to big omega of f of n if t of n is equal to big omega of f of n and t of n is equal to big o of f of n then t of n is of is big theta of f of n and the converse is also true if t of n is big theta of f of n we already saw that t of n must be big o of f of n and here we've said that it also must be big omega of f of n so t of n is big theta of f of n if and only if t of n is big omega of f of n and t of n is big o of f of n so let's take the same example of the quadratic expression an square plus bn plus c let's say t of n is an square plus bn plus c for some positive constant q we've already seen that an square plus bn plus c is theta of n square so just based on that fact we could conclude that the an square plus bn plus c is big omega of n square but we can also prove this separately separate from that uh, conclusion or that proof that t of n is big theta of uh, n square we can directly prove that there exists a constant c1 greater than 0 such that t of n is bounded from below by this constant multiple of n square and how do we prove that 
So if we take C1 to be equal to A by 2, then this, cons this inequality is going to hold only if a n square minus a by 2 n square plus b n plus c is greater than or equal to 0. So that will then become a by 2 n square plus b n plus c is greater than or equal to 0. So if this inequality holds, then we can then we can claim that p of n is bounded from below by this constant multiple of n square. And this inequality holds because a by 2 is a positive number since a is a positive number. a by 2 is greater than 0. So the, uh, the graph for this quadratic expression is going to be a parabola again. Or equivalently, if, if, if uh, one way to conclude that this is going to be greater than or equal to 0 is from the graph of this function. If you look at uh, values of n that are very large, larger than this second root, that is in this particular range, you are guaranteed that this function is going to have a value that is greater than 0. Another way to prove that is, you look at the ratio of these two terms to this dominant term. The ratio is going to tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. And so the value of this expression for large n is going to be approximately equal to a by 2 n squared itself because these two terms are going to be insignificant relative to the value that this term takes. And because this term takes a hugely positive value, the overall function is going to adopt a positive value. So for large n, we know that p of n is going to be bounded from below by this particular constant multiple of n squared. And so we can conclude that p of n is big omega of n squared.